give you a quick overview of where everything lives in our kitchen, right? So these cupboards are the Tupperware that I use for lunches and food preparation stuff. So chopping boards, jugs, scales, graters, salad spinner, that kind of stuff. This is the infamous uh, junk drawer, which I'll tell you there on camera. Link up in the corner. Um, and it hasn't really changed that much. These are the extra bits for the fridge when we got the new fridge. That's a water filter thing. Actually, it's a water filter for a water boiler, which we still have. That's the broken lid off my pan. There's a story to that. I have these pans. These pans. Love these pans. Clear lid, stainless steel, solid, um, encapsulated base, uh, Baker light handles. I have had them 25 years, and two of them's lids have broke. So the handles are just basically, these were screwed on and the threads in there have broke. So two of them have gone like that. And I kept the pieces thinking the master could like, fix them, but he said that it's not, I just thought you needed to put a new screw in, but it's not, the threads have gone. So let's just tell you what these are. <laughs> I saw these on Amazon for 22 pounds, which looked identical from the picture, but they're not identical. Then for this, let's take it in so you can see. So they look almost identical. Similar handles, similar shape, similar style. But these, well, let's, let's do it for real, huh? Let's get my scales out. Get the lids off. This is my original pan. 485 grams. This is the new pan. 272 grams. They're really lightweight. They're really crappy, right? And you can see they're sort of, they would bend in the space of five minutes. But the lids, the lids from the new pans fit. The old pans. Exactly, they're exactly the same. <coughs> and so, for the 22 pounds... Oh, this is just a little one, by the way. There's a massive stew pan. And there's a massive fry sauté pan. And there's a massive... That you get four. You get a stew pan, sauté pan. Oh, six. Yeah. The medium... No, the big, medium, small, and then like the milk pan. So for the £22 that I paid for them, I'm going to keep all the lids, because the lids work with my ones. And then I'm just going to give the pans away, because my pans are better. And we have been trying to get a, pan, a set similar to the ones I've got for about three years, because they, they haven't worn out. They've just... Look, this is why I like them. Apart from that little milk pan, which I use for boiling eggs, all of the pans have double handles. They're lovely solid bases. That's what their bases look like. They're encapsulated base, 18, 10, stainless steel. They clean a dream. But what's happened, hold on. What's happened over the years is, you see that screw? <laughs> It's, it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just inside the plastic has broken. And these are not plastic. These are Bakelite, whereas the new ones are plastic. So I have tried to get replaced with pans forever because I love pans with the two things on the side. I don't like pans with handles that stick over. I don't mind the one, which I use for boiling eggs, but all the other ones I use, the small, medium and large, have the handles on the side. And I hate non-stick pans because there are ones that I've seen in the shop with two handles, but they're non-stick. And I've seen some really nice stainless steel pans, but they've got the handles. So these are, are like my ultimate pans and I've had them for 25 years, but I needed something to replace the handles on the lids or the lids. 
So for £22.90, that's what that is. They are effectively my replacement lids. And then rather than wasting the pans, we're going to give the pans to a charity shop or someone else or someone who needs some pans and are not that fussed about the lids. So that was me telling you what's in my junk drawer. So all it's in here is really, the reason why there's a big space there was there was light bulbs, but we've only got one left at the moment. So but that's the junk drawer. You've seen what's in that cupboard. This is where the tea towels live and the cleaning cups and the sponges. You've seen this before. This is um, for just the tea making knives and uh, spoons and the one I use to make my eggs and the dog food and buttering knives. And then this is the normal cutlery. And then this is the utensils which needs a clear out. And then this is the drawer that I was just about to talk to you about. Which is where all the pans live. So they all sort of stack up in a tray there. And we've noticed, we've got quite a few. We've got like four of the big ones, four of the medium ones, four of these little ones. And then the, the uh, cake pans live in there as well. It's a bit crowded to be fair. And then the cooling racks for cooking as well. But we don't like the... See, I'm so old school. Back in the day, I used to have some really old vitreous enamel baking trays. I had two of them, two flat ones, like double this size. Oops, sorry. Two, like double this size. And I had one roaster. And they were the only baking trays I had, and they were brilliant. They lasted forever. Then what happened, I think they got too hot. I can't remember what happened, but they warped. So when they've warped, they're really hard to use. And I'd had them for about 20, 30 years. So we bought some other ones. We bought these ones from Sainsbury's, which are called Lifetime Guarantee Non-Stick Never Wear Off Trays. And it's, you can't dishwash them, you have to wash them by hands, and we have literally done exactly what they've said all the way along the line, which is wash them by hand every time we use them. And these ones are not even a year old, and they're nowhere good quality like the vitreous enamel old things. This is the non-stick coming off. And I, I don't like non-stick anyway. I don't think it's very good for you. This is a non-stick frying pan, and this was a really expensive job. It needs to be washed, by the way. I made an omelette. That's why it's sitting there. Um, and it's like, this was supposed to be a non-stick, not supposed to come off of this, but look, big chunks of it. That is not egg stuck on there. That is big chunks. And this was something like, this is a Jamie Oliver tea fowl pan. So I meant like 30 pans, just for the pan. <laughs> I can't stand non-stick. And so I've said to my husband, that's it, take all the ones out. I was going to wait to see the clutter and I go through them all and say, throwing it, throwing it, throwing it. So my husband has taken them out or he's either used them and basically stuck them here because it won't, there's no point washing it if I'm throwing it in the bin because they're not going anywhere apart from the metal recycling place. And so these two are like, he's taken them out, they're going. Uh, this one he has used, but obviously, I think we decided that we're basically getting rid of them all because we don't like. And then that's him just being lazy because that's the one that I cooked chicken on two days ago and he just hasn't washed it. This is a vitreous enamel one. This, nothing ever comes off of it. I, well, I've had that 25 years and it was given to me by the mum of my ex-boyfriend. So this pan needs washing, but ugh, it's got not one scrape on it, and it is, actually I'll put it out there, because I like it. It's probably 30 or 40 years old. Whereas these pans from Sainsbury's are crap, and I get the leaflet as well, because it said that they're guaranteed for 10 years to stop any of this stuff happening. But anyway, what we've decided to do is we're getting rid of all these non-stick pans and we're using Pyrex glassware. And I used to use Pyrex, well I've used Pyrex for years, particularly up there behind the steamers. 
I've just noticed there's a roaster up there. Is you see them two old Pyrex dishes? My nan gave me those. My nan gave me those in the 80s, and I used them to cook pasta dishes and casseroles in the oven. I've used them forever. And I used to have a Pyrex roasting dish as well, same size as this. It's also I need to wash it. My husband's again left it on the side, pretending that he doesn't need to wash it. Because <laughs> um, I don't know, that could probably go in the dishwasher actually. He could have bunged that in the dishwasher, couldn't he? Oh well. Um, yeah, so we decided to. I used to have one of these exactly like this, which I did all the roast potatoes in, roast veggies, da 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 da. And it broke, or it must have broke because we don't have it anymore. So what we decided to do was replace all of these and all of those in the drawer with a selection of Pyrex ones. So this seems to be the smallest size Pyrex one that you can get because we like to have two small ones that can go next to each other in the oven. We bought one of these to try. I'm sure you could probably get it. Yeah, you could get two of those in the oven, couldn't you? Could you? Right, it's up to there. Can you remember that for me? It's up to that one. I need to put you down. It might just make it. I need to clean my oven. I need to clean everything. I'm a slummock. And I also need to reset the time on that. <laughs> ah, right. So we've bought one of those smaller ones to try. Which would be nice for baking things. Let's put my scales back on my And then we've bought two. Uh, what like as though they would be these. <laughs> no flat dishes. And they are superior oven proof heat resistance, stain and no resistance, scratch resistance, made in France. Uh, made in France. Um, they can go up to 300 degrees in the oven, then go in the microwave, the dishwasher, the freezer, up to whatever that means, minus 40 degrees. They can go 220 degrees either way, so straight out of the freezer into the oven. And healthy, 100% food safe. So it's funny, my nan always used to use Pyrex years ago. And then I used to use Pyrex, and then I don't know when I used to use Pyrex. And then I started using Spitfire's enamel when my ex-boyfriend's mum gave me some. And now I'm going back to the Pyrex. So basically they're sitting on there, waiting uh, for me to clear out that drawer. And throw these away, wash those up, and then put my Kenwood back over there. So let me do all of that. I have remembered why my husband didn't wash up the plates. Well, here I am maligning him <laughs> for not washing up the bowls. But we have had for two weeks, on and off, a blocked sewer. So it's not been at our end. Our sewer's down there. Um, basically, there was a broken sewer or... Uh, what's it called, blocked sewer in the main road and they came for three days and couldn't clear it. I've got some video footage. I always forget when something exciting is happening, we should be vlogging it. <laughs> yeah, the main pipes outside is blocked. The sewage pipe. Buongiorno, people of the internet. And this is what happens when you get a collapsed sewer outside. Look. And then then they come back and said that they think it's a collapsed sewage because basically three days later it was full again and we're quite savvy with it we can we've got our own because we're detached we've got our own like manhole covers that we can look down so my husband kept checking it to make sure and then when it was blocked block and it was blocked all the way up the road we they just said like can you, you know, not use your dishwasher not use your washing machine and so my husband used it as an excuse not to wash the pans because he said, oh, I can't let the water out the sink. 
which is true, because um, they did try to tell us to just sort of like use minimum water. But then they knocked. I think it's all clear now. It was definitely all clear yesterday. So I can do all of what that's. <laughs> dishwasher's been on. The washing machine's been on. I had a bath last night. You know, we are making the most of being as it is water again. I knew as soon as I started going to talk, because the washing machine would decide to start spinning. Uh, I'm just soaking the bottom of that pan. But I just wanted to show you this. This is the top bit. So this, this pan, right, is vitreous enamel. I don't know how they do it. I think it's just an enameled metal. This, I was working it out while I was just washing it, is around 28 years old, possibly older. My mother-in-law, no, not my mother-in-law, before I was with my husband, I was with a man for nine years. And we met when I was 20 or 21, 21. And she gave this to me when I was 21. Not as a 21st birthday or anything, just like, oh, you know, I was just, I was starting home, blah, 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 blah. She gave this to me. And it was one of her old ones. So I've had it 28 years, right? She may have had it, I don't know, five years, 10 years, 20 years, who knows? Like, look at it. Not one dink, not one scratch, not one part of the enamel. This is what vitreous enamel looks like. Okay? And then this is what modern day, less than a year old, baking trays, let me find that next down one. Modern day baking trays go like after a year. So a year in use, and we don't dishwasher it, we don't use scratchy um, bins on it, <laughs> we only use plastic utensils, so like these utensils, we don't use metal utensils on it. So after a year, this happens. So look, what is the difference between the quality 28 years ago, 30 years ago, whenever this was made, and then, look, it's just crazy. And these weren't cheap, these weren't cheap ones from the pound shop or cheap ones from, you know, I was gonna say Woolworths. <laughs> Woolworths don't exist anymore. Wilco's, you know, when you go to Wilco's, you pay 2 99 you get another dish. These were dear ones, like 20 pounds for the set of two or 20 pounds for the set of four or something. And it's just like, and that's why we're getting rid of them. And if I could get good quality vitreous enamel like this from 30 years ago, I'd be buying them, but instead I'm gonna stick with the pirates for the time being. Can't go wrong with the old school stuff, can ya? And you're not gonna get any bad chemicals off the... I don't know what I'm gonna do for a saucepan. I used to have an enamel saucepan as well. I wonder what happened to that. Anyway, let's get on to washing this. We've got all that cleaned and back together. The washing's nearly done. Uh, oh, I still haven't finished my tea. I never drink my tea. This has all been wiped down. Chocolates and the cake have been put on there. These are the, the attachments, the spare bits for my Kenwood. These are the bits that I don't use that much. I've got to find somewhere to put them, which is why I've left them there. Wow, the sun's really sunny now. Whoa, it's warm in here too. Yeah, you can see the sun has pretty much come up. It's about, I don't know what time is now, half nine or something? Yeah. Um, no, it's to four. Uh, what's it saying? Yeah, I've got to find a place to put these. These are all the spare bits, you know, like, obviously never use a bit. Or maybe I'll just determine whether I use them and if I don't, don't keep them. But I'm hoping that once all these trays are thinned down, there's going to be more room in here, because that's the spare bowl for it, is in there. And all my cooking dishes, you know, baking dishes. Funnily enough, that's the collection, that's the make. Is that the make? So this says metal utensil friendly. Dishwasher safe. No, maybe it isn't the make. Freezer safe, oven, blah, blah, blah. I thought it was. I've got the thing up there. Up there. I think I've got the packaging for it because it said it had a 10 year guarantee and I thought, we'll see. But anyway, I'm hoping that my bits fit in here because you won't have so many trays. Or this will be all the baking stuff and the trays, cooking trays, will just go up here because there is stuff in there that I'm not going to use anymore. That big baking dish is going to go. There's some weird chicken cooker thing up there. Oh! Now we all know about that cupboard, don't we? Anyway, 
Oh, I'm worn out. <laughs> oh, but look, he's eating his, paras- his antibiotic tablets eventually after lots and lots and lots of persuasion. Didn't you? You want to go back up to bed, don't you? But I've left stuff on the stairs, so you can't. Well, I'm going to come up with you in a minute, Luxter, because my belly ain't good today, so I might stop with a couple of hours cleaning and then start this again. Yeah, you can go upstairs now. I've moved everything get away. You going to bed? She says, no. No. There might be a toy living in there. He wants me to go with him. He's been very cuddly the last two days while he's been not very well. Right, let me finish this pan, wipe all these sides down, finish wiping this side down. Then I think I might call it a day. I'm sure I'm jibber jabbered for about 20 minutes on this video. I need to go and iron the shirts, put these in the washing with tumble dry, and then unload the tumble dry, and then I need to iron the shirts. So maybe this will be my kitchen intro. Well, I might as well finish quickly going through the cupboards and you've seen the pantry, you've seen the sweet thing, you've seen up there above the cooker which is pantry, you haven't seen below the cooker which is the graveyard of stuff we don't use anymore, there's a soup cooker, there's a, a magic bullet which is the neutral bullet before it was the ma- neutral bullet, there's a deep fat fryer which we haven't used for about 15 years, there's a, I don't know what that is, some egg thing, there's a sandwich toaster, there's a, one of them bled stick blender things. I think that whole lot will be going. To be honest, that might be a good place to keep all the baking stuff. This is where we keep the saucepans. This is collapsed. It still works. You can see another one of the broken handles from the saucepans. This thing still works, but it's just so old. It's the point is, this is what I call the party drawer, which has got stuff like when we have barbecue and ice cube trays, and that's where my husband put it. Barbecue sticks and this motor disc, and there's a gas thing for a barbecue, and then there's cocktail stirrers and these things for when we have a cocktail pack which we haven't had for years. But this is all party stuff and entertaining. This is where we keep food bags and cling film and grease proof paper. This is, sorry, get slam in the comments. This is the dog cupboard, which has got his dry food, his treats. He's currently, he's on this at the moment, so I can mix it with his painkillers and his antibiotics. It's not shutting quite because of that. You've seen that drawer, you've seen that drawer. This cupboard has got uh, cleaning stuff in it. So dishwasher tablets and stuff like that. And then, so is this cupboard. <laughs> I'll probably be able to amalgamate the state of that. That needs, definitely needs cleaning out. Oh, and then... <laughs> Oh, and then I've got other cupboards. This is where we keep uh, takeaway cups, food, food containers that we use. We take my mum and my brother out. I say quite a lot. Like in summer, we probably take them out every once every month. Um, we usually take packed food with us, so sandwiches or salads and boiled eggs and stuff. So we make a picnic. And that's what they're for. There are bowls, there are side plates, there are mugs, there are main plates. God knows what's in there. That all needs clearing away. This is where tea lives, speciality tea. So there's all different types of, you know, mint tea or my mum likes the twins every day. And then there's Dorset tea, mint tea, jasmine green tea, decaf tea, lemon tea. I think that's a hot chocolate, I know it's a chai latte, but I only drink normal tea, you know, English breakfast tea, but guests can have that. This is a, he's been there forever, little teddy bear that I got from Ikea. This is a Loch Ness Monster from Scotland. This is sherry glasses. <laughs> My goodness. The last time we used those was for a funeral, we probably don't need them anymore. They are all our glasses and we can probably thin those right down, really. These are the only ones we use. We occasionally use the wine glasses when people come and stay. These are party glasses, these are party glasses, these are party glasses, as in we have like 18 of each of them. And we do keep them. We can keep them in the garage or we can just give them away. These are all different bottles of wedding. Um, You know when you get married, and someone gives you, you get a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, but. <laughs> and then this cupboard is the oddball glasses, cocktail shaker, freebie glasses, pint glasses that my husband uses in summer. This is his St. Lucia one that goes in the freezer. 
Shot glasses, Jesus. When did we last do shots? They used to be in the bathroom, that's a bathroom glass, but we don't use it anymore because we've both got electric toothbrushes. And then that's our, from our wedding, our champagne, what's it called? Where you keep your champagne cool, champagne cool last. <laughs> that's the bottle of champagne that my husband bought. 2012, he hasn't drunk it, he doubt if he drunk it. These are my supplements, vitamin D and magnesium. Uh, and then this is just all crap paperwork. This is the stuff that we've been dealing with with Thames Water because the um, drains, blockage cleared by night crew, so it's now running, then it was blocked again. So that's all handy with the reference numbers on it. Come on. I'm sitting there showing you something different while I'm doing <gasps> There they are, there they are. Look, I told you I kept them. 10 year guarantee. Heavy gold, medium oven glaze, times three. Metal utensil friendly, non stick coating. From roasting tins, especially at Cake Mold, our premium non stick bakeware. Excellent heat distribution, that's why we're giving you a 10 year guarantee. Timeless, da 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 I bet I kept the receipt as well. What did I do with the receipt? Did I stick it in there? I like that, you know. Put this up here. I bet I shall find it amongst all this. <laughs> That's the oven. We have bought a new oven like this. Just all the stuff that needs sorting out of there. I'm glad I found that. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to leave that sticking out as well so I remember to look for the receipt. All the things sticking out. Sugar! All right. <laughs> so, and then that's it. And then up there is spare kitchen towels. Um, Food cooler bags, it's the top of our wedding cake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting when I get that down. And then up there is the trays we use when we're carrying food around. And I don't even know what else is up there. Some mason jar things that I don't use anymore, and the big serving trays. That needs a good clear out there. I can't wait to get up there. So I think that's it. And then there's just random crap. My husband he calls that his tool section. Some tissues that need to be put away. The thing that I use to water the plants, one of these electric can outfits that we never use anymore because we burn them as can, and two birds, I don't even know why they're there. <laughs> and then, yeah, so this, call this the introduction to my kitchen to cloud. This is where we're starting. And so far, right now, I'm undecided about whether I'm going to pull. Did is anyone watch someone called TJ's Ways doing her kitchen to cloud? I'm going to link up. It was the best kitchen declutter I have ever seen. In fact, her whole Con Marie decluttering series was the best declutter I have ever seen. Um, but she pulled every single thing out onto the floor, every single item. Uh, I mean, she had a bigger kitchen than me for a start. I'm going to go in the conservatory because the um, dish, uh, washing machine's filling up and spinning and all that lot. And it's lovely and warm. And... Um, she pulled every single thing out and determined that way what she was keeping and what she was going, you know, what was, was going. She basically just had everything on the floor. And I'm not sure if that's what I'm going to do or whether I'm going to do it a cupboard at a time because I think I might, because I come and go, like to work and stuff, I can't, or whatever, I can't be in the middle of it and not get it done and then have to go to work the next day because my husband would come home from work and go, what's all this stepping over pots and pans in the kitchen? It just it just wouldn't work for me. Um, but I would quite like to maybe maybe bring everything out here and put it on here and determine it that way, like literally empty everything out. Maybe I'll do it that way. Certainly save my knees, because my knees are a bit damaged. But yeah, I think that's what I do. I think what I'll do, but not today, in the next video, <laughs> um, is I'm going to empty those cupboards out not the drawers even though that is a drawer i can't think of it as a cupboard so the, the cooking materials the tupperware the baking dishes the pots and pans and the appliances so all these lower cupboards not the dog cupboard or the cleaning cupboard because they're not related and i'll put them all on the table and i'll declutter that way i'll choose what we're keeping that way and then i can put everything back and then I'll do all the drawers, and then I'll do all the cupboards, and then I'll do all the tops. 
So it's probably going to be like four parts. Cupboards, drawers, upper cupboards, <laughs> whatever the other thing, like tops. So yeah, right, I still haven't finished that tea. Two hours ago I made that tea. So I'm going to sign off now. This has just basically been a catch up and an introduction to the fact that I'm back in the game. I am, I've been watching a lovely woman, I'll also link, uh, called uh, Bottoms, what's her name? Her name's Michelle. Is it My Everyday Wife Life? I think it's My Everyday Wife Life. And she's been, she is on a purge and declutter kick. And I'm joining in. I am joining in with basically, that's what I'm going to call this. I'm going to call it my kitchen purge and declutter. Um, because, uh, and then I can move on to doing my garage purge and declutter. And then my loft purge and declutter. And then my house, in theory, will be totally decluttered because I did the rest of it last year. So, yeah, I'm back in the game, gang. Back in the game. Thank you.